Hello everyone and welcome to the next class for India's 33. We will continue with the basic EPS calculation. In yesterday's class we had focused on the calculation of veins. Today's class we will focus on the calculation of the numerator for the basic EPS calculation. Now this is one area where the solutions given by institute in a particular aspect are not, not consistent uh, in line with what you have studied in financial instruments but having said that. Uh, there are just only two questions and none of them have come in the past. So what we will try to do is we will just tell you what should be done ideally, what has been done by the institute and hence we will solve as per the institute's verdict and proceed. So over here the numerator in the basic EPS calculation, when you are calculating the numerator while determining the basic EPS, in case of a numerator, you will take the profit after all the expenses that can be salary, rent, everything including taxes. And what about pr payments to preference shareholders? Well, preference shareholders in the older law were actually owners. And as a result, payments to them were actually appropriations. But since you are calculating earnings per equity share, then in your AS20, if you remember, you were taught that earnings per equity share is calculated as net profit minus preference dividend. Why? Because preference dividend as per AS would always go under appropriation. Because preference shares are owners though EPS is per equity share. However, under index to be honest that is not necessary because preference shares which are for example cumulative redeemable preference shares are in the nature of liability and hence preference dividend is a part of finance cost and if it is a part of finance cost it would have already been deducted. While calculating net profit you don't have to deduct it again so it's not net profit minus preference dividend it is net profit which already has reduced the payment made for preference dividend. On the other hand, in certain rare cases like irredeemable preference shares with discretionary dividend, these are actually equity in nature, but at the end of the day, they are not equity shares, they are equity in nature. EPS is not earning per equity, it is EPS is earning per equity share. And as a result, if it's an irredeemable preference share with discretionary dividend, which is equity in nature. And as a matter of fact, in the current year, some payment or some dividend is given to those preference shareholders, then this payment would be shown as a part of appropriations. It would be deducted directly from retained earnings, not as a part of finance cost, because this is payment made to owners, where owners can be equity shareholders, owners can be irredeemable preference shareholders with discretionary dividend as well. And hence, this would have gone in retained earnings. Now, if you want to calculate the EPS, the numerator will have net profit for equity shareholders. And as a result, in the numerator, you should separately have to deduct the preference dividend. Sir, but Q wo finance cost me gaya rega. This would not have gone in finance cost because preference shares were in the nature of equity. Remember, if it is in the nature of equity, then payments made to them, them is payments made to owners. And payments made to owners are never treated as expense in the PL account. So, long story short, if preference shares are classified as liability, then the preference dividend paid to them would already be deducted while calculating net profit and hence need not be deducted again. Whereas if preference shares were classified as equity, then payment if any done to them during the year would be adjusted in retained earnings. And as a result, while calculating EPS, we'll have to separately deduct them so that we can find the payment which is attributable to equity shareholders. This is very logical. Aja. So there's nothing wrong over here as well. So over here, when we are looking at the numerator, this is on page number 69 of your shield. When we are looking at the numerator of our basic EPS calculation, the profit for equity shareholders should be calculated after deducting all expenses. So your profit for equity shareholders should be after deducting all expenses, including taxes, which can be current as well as deferred tax, preference dividend, okay and payments made to preference shareholders. So preference dividend, but sometimes there might be other payments which are made to preference shareholders like premium on redemption. Uh, or let us say there might be some premium on conversion. So anything which is paid to the preference shares is reducing the amount available to equity shares. Okay, so preference dividend and other payments to preference shareholders like premium or discount or redemption of the preference shares, they have to be deducted irrespective of whether the preference shares are classified as either equity or financial liability. Achha, my point was if they are classified as financial liability then in the net profit number they would have already been deducted and hence you don't have to separately deduct. If they are classified as equity then in the net profit they would not have been deducted and hence you have to separately deduct. But in any case ultimately 
in the net profit number you will have to deduct it is like saying that let us say for example your sales were 1000 and let us say your cogs and this is the only expense was 400 apart from that there is preference dividend there are two possibilities well preference dividend when preferences are classified as financial liability let's say there is 100 rupees in which case your net profit would be 500 and as a result you don't need to subtract anything separately because preference dividend is already subtracted however if preference dividend is classified as equity then this would be sales of 1000 less cogs of 400 preference dividend would not be deducted while calculating net profit and hence the net profit given to you would have been 600 however while calculating your retained earnings while calculating your retained earnings there would be some opening balance plus pat that is 600 less preference dividend of 100 and hence this would give you ultimately your net worth so in this case if you have to calculate the basic eps for the eps calculation you will start at the net profit is 600 which is without deducting the preference dividend so you have to deduct it in order to come to 500 that is all we are trying to convey okay so which is correct which is logical as well the preference dividend where preference shares are treated as financial liabilities then preference dividend would be a finance cost that is an expense and hence it should be taken to the pnl account perfect as we would have already deducted this while calculating the profit then no separate adjustment is needed if you are starting from net profit or net profit is already after deducting preference dividend the preference shares as equity in this case preference dividend would be like an appropriation and hence we would have reduced it as a part of our retained earnings however it has to be deducted separately in order to calculate the profit for equity shareholders in order to find the profit for equity shareholders you will have to deduct this separately okay perfect uh, sir why because this 600 would be before deducting preference dividend so you have to deduct it separately perfect Aja, now the question arises that how will you deduct preference dividend if they are cumulative if they are cumulative that means the preference dividend expense would arise each year irrespective of whether you pay or not so even if it is whether declared or not declared paid or not paid you will have to recognize a preference dividend charge because it is cumulative however it is if it is non-cumulative then you will consider it only if it is declared slash paid if it is not declared slash paid it is not a liability so as a general rule an entry for preference dividend would be passed based on its nature so if it is a cumulative then you will deduct it irrespective of whether it is declared or not but if it is non-cumulative you will deduct it only if it is declared or as a case maybe it is paid during the year otherwise you will not deduct it logical Achha next comes this part which according to me we have done this as per icai however this is not correct in my limited opinion this might be correct let us say if you look at it from as and this is drafted by a person who has only studied as but in my limited understanding there is some flaw so what does the institute mention it says that if there is a premium on redemption of preference shares if you were to let's say redeem or early redeem preference shares at a premium then where will that premium go well in my opinion it will go to the finance cost as profit and loss account why because if preference share is a liability the fact that they are getting redeemed it is a liability and if preference share is a liability then payments made to preference shares whether it is in the nature of preference dividend or it is redemption of preference shares it has to go to the profit and loss account institute here believes that it has to be charged to the retained earnings which in my opinion is not correct but my opinion matters less over here the institute's working is more important there are one or two questions on eps better to do it the way institute has done and proceed so the premium or redemption on either early settlement of preference shares the early settlement might be happening through an early redemption or an early settlement might be happening through early conversion if it is early redemption then we would have adjusted through retained earnings in the company this is what the icai has done in my opinion that is not correct it depends on how you have accounted or what is the nature of the preference shares if the preference shares were in the nature of equity and if you had to redeem which is slightly unlikely because they are not redeemable in the first place but if you had to redeem then you take it to return earnings but if the preference shares is in the nature of liability and you have to early redeem it then this gain or loss has to go to the statement of profit and loss account because it is a gain or loss on settlement of liability. However, institute believes that it should go to return earnings and it has solved accordingly. 
uh, so we will there is inconsistent treatment in the institutes working only Achha, as no impact would have been given while calculating pad because you have taken it into the return earnings hence a separate adjustment needs to be done in the profit while calculating basic eps in my opinion this is not appropriate the accounting has to be based on whether it is classified as a liability or equity but nevertheless Achha, if it is early conversion on the other hand what the institute do, do, does is it believes that it would have been taken in the finance cost in the statement of pnl now i i the best of my understanding i can't understand how that is because if it is converted again if there's a gain or loss on conversion it depends on how the preferences were originally classified if they were originally classified as equity then the gain or loss on conversion will go to the return earnings if they were classified as liability then it will go to the profit and loss here it is a blanket working where they have taken that it is going to go to the profit and loss then would have been taken in the profit and loss as the amount has already been adjusted while calculating profit no separate adjustment is done long story short if there is early redemption then the gain or loss would have been taken into return earnings as per the institutes working if there's an early conversion the gain or loss would have gone into the statement of profit and loss as per the institutes working if an item has gone into the return earnings then it would not have been considered in net profit and hence it has to be considered separately however if something has gone into the profit and loss already then we don't need to adjust it because it has already been adjusted the above treatment is line with the icai suggested treatment for redemption or conversion in index 33 though it is more appropriate to treat this based on whether it is a liability or equity i just show where the institute has mentioned if you go to this is a may 22 study model also there in the may 21 study model if it, you go to page 11.38 a redemption or repurchase of preference shares at a premium so the institutes working over here if you see at the end they say that the excess of fair value of consideration paid to the preference shareholders over the carrying amount of preference shares. so for example you are paying 110 for preference shares which are worth 100 represents a return to the holders of the preference shares and a charge to the retained earnings for the entity which is not appropriate ideally this amount is deducted in calculating the profit or loss attributable to ordinary shareholders of the parent entity so an example is also given to el elaborate that that abc has preference shares of 100 now abc buys back the shares at 120 and hence the 20 extra that is paid is charged to the retained earnings well why if these preference shares are in the nature of liability and you are paying that early with the premium it has to go to the pnl but they are saying that it goes to the retained earnings so we are following that no amount is recorded in the statement of PNL for this. However, for EPS purposes, rupees 20 is charged to the statement of profit and loss for the transaction. So we will subtract 20 while calculating EPS. The same thing for early conversion. The same thing for early conversion. They have mentioned that the fair value of the ordinary shares or other consideration paid over the fair value of the uh, shares issuable is a return to preference shareholders and is deducted in calculating profit and loss so it is believed that it is already reduced while calculating profit and loss uh, no clear rationale is given and hence for this one particular adjustment we will just and we will solve it the way the institute does it Achha, sub point c looks at another item it says that sometimes it might happen that there are certain expenses which are either permitted to be deducted from the profit and loss account or directly deducted from some other reserve like securities premium so items like preliminary expenses for example are allowed or underwriting commission for example are allowed to be either written off against the statement of profit and loss account or against securities premium now this will result in a problem because there might be two companies let us say company a and company b both of them have earned a net profit of 100 before preliminary expenses now preliminary expenses of 50 rupees have been charged by company a in the statement of pnl which is very well within the law and hence the net profit comes to 50 whereas company b has deducted these expenses from the securities premium so there is some securities premium out of which 50 is deducted and hence the net profit appears as 100 so what will appear is company b is better as compared to company a but that is 
because of an accounting decision that they have taken which is permitted by law so that is why the standard says over here that in case there is a particular expense like preliminary expense or a gain or loss on redemption of preference shares or debentures etc which has been permitted to be either reduced from the pnl or from some reserve directly while calculating eps you will always reduce it so if i were to calculate the eps for a in the numerator 50 will appear for b 100 minus 50 will appear whether it has gone through the securities premium or not it does not matter so basically you will have a consistent numerator and the sub point c any expense which is ordinarily deductible from pnl but is also allowed to be deducted from securities premium should be deducted in the net profit for basic eps calculation it has to be deducted if it is already deducted like for company a then no further adjustment but for company b if it has been reduced from retained earnings then you will have to separately adjust over here an example is preliminary expenses or premium on redemption as a case may be based on these you will do six and seven both of these are controversial questions you will definitely have doubts in this i'm telling you right now and i'll also tell you that i will not be able to resolve to your satisfaction because we have solved both of these questions exactly the way the institute has solved though an alternative solution depending on your understanding of financial instruments is also and should also be done but just for these two questions we don't really divert from what the institute has done so let us go to question number six question number six uh, we'll just read this question please Achha, at the end uh, bada question hai, but at the end you have been given that the profit attributable uh, or we can say that the profit just cancel this the profit for the year just cancel these words the profit for the year 2014 is 1 lakh 50 determine the adjustments for the purpose of calculating EPS this is we are looking at question number six we have been given that the net profit is 1 lakh 50 net profit is 1 lakh 50 and we have to do certain adjustments okay for the so we want to find the numerator for basic eps calculation so this is net profit and this is 1 lakh 50 okay point one five percent redeemable non-cumulative preference shares so these are redeemable but non-cumulative preference shares these shares are classified as liability so the question is telling you so we are not going to debate on that they are classified as liability during the year a dividend was paid they are non-cumulative and hence dividend will be recorded when it is actually declared or paid so during the year the dividend was paid on the five percent preference shares so how much will be the, the preference share amount is one lakh so over here you will have preference share capital which is a financial liability to the extent of 1 lakh and in the PNL preference dividend at 5% that is 5000 would have been recorded this would always be would this would be a part of finance charge why because the preference shares are classified as liability no ambiguity over it there would be they would be classified as a part of the finance charge and as a result while calculating 1 lakh 50 which is a net profit they would have already been deducted and hence no separate adjustment so this would have been already deducted therefore no separate adjustment should have been deducted they would have been deducted so this is sub point one now sub point two is a very weird adjustment but nevertheless we'll do it increasing rate cumulative non-redeemable preference shares issued at a discount okay so it's a increasing rate so the rate is not constant the rate will increase cumulative it will accumulate a non-redeemable that is a perpetual preference share issued at a discount in 2010 the cumulative dividend rate from 2015 is of 10 percent Achha, this is from 2015 of 10 percent we are currently in the year 2014 so the cumulative dividend will start from the next year the shares were issued at a discount to compensate the holders because the dividend payments will not commence 
till 2015 the accrual for the discount in the current year the accrual for the discount in the current year calculated using the effective interest method amounted to say 18000 okay so this is like the discount charges amortized on these preferences amounting to 18000 these are classified as equity which is 2 lakhs so over here there is preference share capital which is classified as equity and during the year there is some amortization well if they are classified as equity this amortization must have gone through the retained earnings worth 18000 first of all in my opinion this is not possible only because if this something is classified as equity the effective interest method does not apply the effective interest method applies if it is a financial liability but abhi yahan pe diya hai to apan yahan pe zyada magaj mari nahi kar rahe hai if it is given that effective interest method applies okay it is given that effective interest method applies so basically over here there is an amortization charge of 18000 rupees but because his preference shares are classified as equity and it is given to you clearly in this question that they have been classified as equity right which means whatever is the expense whether it is amortization dividend as a case may be would go against the retained earnings and as a result for calculating the earnings for equity shares you will have to reduce that so over here you will have less amortization which is 18000 बिगिनिंग ऑफ दर दीड रुपीज वन लैक ऑफ एट परसेंट प्रेफरेंस एज आउटस्टैंडिंग these are non redeemable but at 30th june 2014 it repurchase it is like a buyback 50000 of these at a discount of 14 at a discount of 1000 and hence the remaining preference shares are 50000 aja so your preference share capital nothing is mentioned about the classification but in my understanding this will be an equity classification because it is non cumulative as well as non redeemable this is appearing at 50000 on this preference dividend will be recorded only if it is declared or paid we have not been given about any preference share preference capital being either declared or paid and hence we will ignore however there has been some repurchase and as a result the journal entry over here will be preference share capital account debit well this is going to be debited by 50000 to bank we are paying 49000 they are repurchase at a discount of 1000 to let us say gain and this gain as per the institute whether it was classified as liability or equity institute says that this is a gain on early redemption or an early repurchase it will go to the profit and loss account so oh, uh, sorry it will go to the retained earnings however this is a this is a benefit for the preference shareholders sorry this is a gain for the equity share holders because ideally we had to pay 50000 instead we paid 49 and 1000 is again so over here you will add the gain of 1000 okay this is solved also in line with the ICI's solution where they have not really said that this is equity or liability they have said that this is since this is uh, a gain on early redemption the gain on early redemption would go to uh, Uh, the gain on early redemption would go to the retained earnings and since it goes to the retained earnings we will uh, uh, we will adjust it over here chalo theek hai then comes 7% cumulative convertible preference shares acha so this can be actually a compound financial instrument because there is 7% which is cumulative and convertible hai so there can be an equity feature as well these shares again if it is convertible into a variable number of shares it can be liability otherwise it can be equity as well these shares were classified as equity acha chalo question told you equity to equity until their conversion into ordinary shares at the beginning of the year so these shares have been converted into ordinary shares at the beginning of the year and hence your journal entry would be preference share capital which is a part of equity 
टू एक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल ठीक है वट अबाउट द सेवन परसेंट डिविडेंट वेल सिंस इट इज क्यूमुलेटिव द लास्ट ईयर डिविडेंट वुड बीन रिकॉर्डेड एज एन एक्सपेंस इन द लास्ट ईयर वेदर इट वॉज पेड और नॉट बिकॉज इट इज क्यूमुलेटिव डिविडेंट ओके नो डिविडेंट वॉज अक्रूड इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द ईयर वेल बिकॉज द कन्वर्जन एपन इन द स्टार्ट ऑफ द ईयर सो इन द करंट ईयर देर वॉज नो डिविडेंट विच वॉज अक्रूड ओके ऑल दो द प्रीवियस ईयर डिविडेंट was paid immediately but the previous year's dividend would have been recorded as a charge or an expense in the previous year because it is cumulative and hence you will not record it again prior to conversion previous year's dividend was paid in the current year but you would have recorded it as an expense in the last year because it is cumulative in nature to induce conversion so that is to incentivize or induce conversion the terms of conversion of the 7% preference share was also amended okay and the revised terms entitled the preference shares to an additional 100 ordinary shares on conversion with a fair value of rupees 300 and the preference share capital now is actually nil the preference share capital is classified as equity but it is nil so on this in the current year you must have passed the entry preference share capital account debit to equity share capital and in that process there would be अ थ्री हंड्रेड रुपीज एडिशनल चार्ज जितना हमने सोचा था उससे तीन सौ रुपया ज्यादा विच द इंस्टीट्यूट बिलीव वुड हैव गॉन टू द पी एन एल आइडियली दिस वुड गो टू द रिटर्न अर्निंग इन माई लिमिटेड अंडरस्टैंडिंग फॉर द सिंपल रीजन दैट द प्रेफर द इंस्टीट्यूट इट सेल्फ इज टेलिंग इज एक्विटी एंड इफ दर्ज एनी गेन विच इज एट्रीब्यूटेबल टू ओन एक्विटी इट गोज डिरेक्टली टू द रिटर्न अर्निंग्स दो इन लाइन विद द इंस्टीट्यूट वर्किंग्स they are going to say that since this is a gain or loss on conversion it would have gone to the pnl already and hence we don't account it separately though in my opinion it should be accounted over here and hence the adjusted net profit comes to 15 minus 18 plus 1 so, sorry 1 lakh 50 minus 18 plus 1 and hence this is 1 lakh 33000 so this is arguable undoubtedly and if you even look at the institute's solution over here this is illustration number 2 with almost the or rather exactly the same language yahan pe profit after tax as we have cancelled that profit attributable to ordinary this is profit after tax of 1 lakh uh, 50 apart from that everything else remains the same and if you go to see this comes to 1 lakh 33 18000 and 1000 ka adjustment 1 lakh 33 and they have given you the explanations okay so this takes care of question 6 you can actually mark 6 also as important in the sense it is just that one off type of a question like that then you will go to question number 7 you can refer the notes over here as well let us read question number 7 abc issues 9% preference shares at a fair value of rupees 10 each on 1st april 2011 okay the total value is rupees 10 lakhs okay these shares are issued for a period of 5 years and would be redeemed at the end of the 5th year these shares are to be redeemed at 11 rupees so ideally your effective interest rate would be greater than 9% and slowly 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 you would move from 10 lakhs towards 11 lakhs ideally if you were to apply effective interest rate method at the end of year 3 that is on 31st march 2014 the company finds that it has earned good returns rather than expected over the last 3 years and can make the redemption of the preference as early to compensate the shareholders for 2 years of dividend which they will forego the company decided to redeem the shares at a 12 rupee acha original value was rupees 11 instead they are deciding to redeem at 12 rupee that is 1 rupee extra per share acha and there are how many such shares i think there are 1 lakh preference shares and for 1 lakh preference shares you are going to pay for 1 lakh preference shares you are going to pay instead of rupees 11 which you had agreed you are going to pay rupees 12 which means 1 lakh more and this 1 lakh more is not going to equity shares it is going to preference shares so this is like a charge this is on early redemption instead of the original agreement of 11 rupees okay comment on the earnings for the year 13 14 
okay this is the year of early redemption ignore the eir impact in the solution and answer on the basis of index 33 only ideally as per eir you would slowly 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 go from let's say 10 rupees to 11 rupees or 10 lakhs to 11 lakhs however the 12 rupees would not have been factored anywhere whether there was eir or no eir so the institute has just mentioned that this 1 lakh rupees will be separately deducted ideally this is an excess amount or a loss that you are paying on redemption and hence it would be a charge against retained earnings so while calculating the net profit this 1 lakh should be separately deducted so over here the 1 lakh should be separately deducted so in the given case company is paying an excess compensation on early redemption on of 1 lakh rupees to preference shareholders since this is a loss on early redemption it would have been taken in the retained earnings in line with the institutes in line with ICI solutions therefore we need to separately deduct 1 lakh from the profits since it represents payments to preference shareholders well apart from that your preference dividend would be there as a part of finance cost in the PL, and hence no separate adjustment is needed but during the year 13 14 maybe this nine percent or whatever is the effective rate would be also there so over here reference not apart from the above preference dividend based on eir in practice would also need to be considered however we have ignored the same as we have been specifically instructed in the question for these two questions i request you to do it the way the institute has done to ensure that there is no conflict Achha, next is question number eight which is important which i would rate as important and this is based on a completely different concept for which institute has given a separate guidance so we can mark this as important question number eight so this is based on the concept of something called as participating preference shares this is a, a separate appendix which is given under index 33 which i would rate as important because it is a special transaction we have given a question for this in the practice question section in your volume number two if you have that handy you can keep it otherwise you can refer page 5, 551 and you can just refer the screen question number two which is a practice question for index 33 we will use that as an as a practical example base to understand what this mean and then you can go to question number eight which is a question which you will solve let us say on your own so what do we mean by participating preference shares well participating preference shares are those preference shares which actually participate in the profits usually preference shares don't participate in profit they are given a fixed return however there are certain preference shares who agree to participate in profit in which case the eps calculation will be slightly different based on a separate appendix the logic is the pool of money the undistributed profit typically we assume that the undistributed profit belongs to equity shareholders only which is wrong if it is participating preference shares these preference shares will also participate in this profit and as a result you will have to calculate the eps in a slightly different manner let us go through question number two on page number 551 once use the numericals read the theory understand and then go to another question okay so an entity has two classes of shares in issue this is 5000 non-convertible preference shares and 10,000 ordinary shares okay equity shares are 10,000 and 5,000 non-convertible shares the preference shares are entitled to a fixed dividend of rupees 5 per share before any dividends are paid on the ordinary shares perfect preference shares are given dividend before you pay anything to ordinary shares and ordinary dividends are then paid in which preference shares do not participate very logical Achha, next part is a problem each preference share then participates in additional ordinary dividend above rupees 2 at a rate of 50 percent of any additional dividend paid on ordinary share this is a participating preference share so 5 rupees fixed to preference share after that discretionarily you can pay 2 rupees to the equity share but after that if you pay any dividend beyond 2 then preference shares are also going to share so for every dividend beyond rupees 2 preference shares will get 50 percent of the additional dividend payable on ordinary shares okay the entity's net profit this is after tax but before preference dividend any kind fixed or participating before that for the year is rupees 1 lakh okay and the dividends of rupees 2 are declared on the ordinary shares they are already declared okay compute the allocation 
of the earnings for the purpose of calculation of basic EPS when entity has ordinary shares and participating preference shares that are not convertible. Achha, typically, if I were to calculate EPS, I would first start at the net profit, which is given to you over here as 1 lakh. Achha, this is net profit, not just belonging to the equity shareholders. A part of that net profit has to first go to preference shares. So, this is 5 rupees fixed into 5000. This has to be taken. The fact that in the current year, 2 rupees of equity dividend is declared, that equity dividend can come only after preference dividend is paid, and hence this is 25,000. Achha, which means typically in the usual case you would have said this is the pat for equity shareholders whether you distribute 2 you distribute 5 you distribute 7 it does not really matter this 75,000 is attributable to equity shareholders in the usual course which is not the case over here this is your pat this is your pat we are saying that okay 75,000 divided by let us say there are 10,000 ordinary shares which means 7.5 is the EPS if you say 7.5 is the EPS you are implicitly saying that whether you distribute or not is secondary but if you decide to distribute then these 10,000 shareholders if they want they will get 7.5 of dividend which is wrong if they decide to if you decide to distribute the entire 75,000 the ordinary shareholders will not get 7.5 because a part of it will have to be shared with the participating preference shares Achha. so how much will they get that is what is going to be the EPS. How will you calculate that? Well, you will say hypothetically if everything is distributed. If everything is distributed, how much comes in the hands of the ordinary shareholders? That is what you have to say. Aja, is everything distributed? Well, probably no. But if everything was distributed, then you will give equity dividend. Aja, equity dividend kitna hoga? Rupees 2 into 10,000 such shares and hence this will be 20,000 which means beyond this 55,000 remains undistributed. However, if so your step one should always be to calculate the undistributed profit. Okay, however, what if this undistributed profit was in fact distributed? Acha, will this go to the 10,000 shareholders? No. Will a part of this go to the 10,000 shareholders? Yes. Will a part of it also go to the preference shareholders? Yes. How much will that be? Let us say, we will have to assume, so this is your step number one where you calculate undistributed profit. Step number two, you will you will figure out how much will each equity shareholder get. So per equity share, let us say the additional dividend is X, which means per preference share, you will get 50% of X, that is 0.5 X. So basically, if this entire 55,000 is distributed, you will formulate an equation. If this entire 55,000 is distributed, then to whom will it be distributed? Will it be distributed only to the 10,000 shareholders? No. This will be distributed to the 10,000 shareholders plus the 5,000 preference shareholders. So this is 5,000 into 0.5x plus 10,000, let us say, into x, which means 55,000 equals therefore 55,000 equals 10,000 x plus you will have 2,500 x therefore 55,000 equals 12,500 x therefore x equals 55,000 upon 12,500 which comes to 4.4 which means if this entire 55,000 is distributed, what comes in the lap of the equity shareholder is only 4.4, nothing beyond that. How much goes in the lap of the preference shareholders? 0.5 into x, which is let's say 2.2. Which means, if this entire is distributed, then how much will each shareholder get? Well, equity shareholder and preference shareholder, the fixed dividend or let us say the dividend which was distributed, your share in the distributed profit was 2 rupees was 5 rupees and in the undistributed profit typically on that entire 75,000 which was undistributed ideally this would have belonged only to the equity shoulders 7.5 entirely or in this 55,000 which is undistributed 55,000 divided by 10,000 that is entirely 5.5 should go over here only nothing would come here ideally however because of the participating preference shares 4.4 only will come to the equity shares but the remaining 2.2 will go to the preference shares and hence the EPS in this case will be the total of the distributed dividend per share 
plus your share in the undistributed dividend per share you have to make the shareholder aware that well if the entire money that you have earned was distributed how much will you get well you will get 6.4 whereas the participating preference shares will get 7.2 sir prove karke dikhao well how many 6.4 and 7.2 how many uh, uh, equity shares are there well there are 10000 equity shares and hence if you were to distribute 6.4 if you were to distribute the entire 1 lakh that you have earned preference equity everything then 6.4 will fall in the lap of equity shareholders whereas 7.2 will fall in the lap of the preference shareholders but there are 5000 preference shares and hence 64000 plus if you do 7.2 into 5000 will come to 36000 and hence the total is 1 lakh and this will give you the actual distribution of 1 lakh if you blindly take uh, 75,000 after deducting preference dividend divided by 10,000 you are assuming which is fair in the normal course that yahan pe 2 rupees distribute kiya hai but if everything was distributed well everything will come to equity here that is not the case and hence the law changes and it says that try to calculate eps as your share in the distributed profit plus your share in the undistributed profit and that will give you the correct eps number we'll just read this in our theory please on page number 70 this is a part of uh, your basic EPS participating preference shares whose accounting is given and then as an appendix as an additional working to index 33 participating preference shares refers to shares which are entitled to dividends which are based on profits typically they have fixed dividends the steps over here would be first to calculate the undistributed profit which is a net profit minus the preference dividend which is distributed minus the equity dividend that has been distributed that will give you the undistributed profit second find the allocation per equity share which we typically take as x and then per preference share which is depending on the formula if all undistributed profits were to be distributed so if everything were to be distributed then how much generally allocation per equity share is taken as x and based on the agreed sharing ratio the allocation to preference share is calculated okay third formulate the equation that is if so this is connecting one and two so if all the undistributed profit as determined in step one is actually distributed then how much will come in the lap of each equity as well as preference so the total undistributed profit which in our example was 55,000 into the number of equity shares which is 10,000 into the allocation into x plus the number of preference shares which is 5,000 into they are going to get 0.5x and hence if the distribution happens both of them are sharing so this is 55,000 and hence you will find x as well as 0.5x eps then needs to be separately calculated for equity shares as well as participating preference shares that is eps is share in the distributed dividend per share plus undistributed that is your total earnings whether distributed or undistributed don't go total karege, that will give you your real share in the earnings per share based on which we will try question number eight or rather you should try question number eight we will go back to our volume number one and this is on page number 123 you can mark it as important pause the video try applying those four steps without fail on your own and then resume i hope you have diligently paused the video and tried if not we'll do it together Aja, the question does not illustrate the classification of the components of convertible financial instruments as liability and equity or classification of related interests and dividends as expense and equity as required by index 109 the question does not do that it does not do that so basically you are solving this ignoring index 109 which almost every question in this chapter they do like in the last question they were you had been told ignore the effect of eir same is the case over here the net profit after tax but before preference dividend any kind of preference dividend is 1 lakh okay the ordinary shares outstanding are 10,000 and the non-convertible preference shares are 6,000 okay the non-cumulative annual dividend on preference shares before any dividend is paid on ordinary shares is 5.5 so 5.5 is non-cumulative you may pay you may not pay 
after ordinary shares have been paid dividend of 2.1 but well if you are paying 2.1 to ordinary shares that can come only after you have made a payment to preference shares which is standard definition acha yahan pe there is a problem the preference shares participate in the additional dividends on a 20s to 80 ratio with the ordinary shares additional dividend at 20s to 80 which means preference shares will get 20 when equity shares get 80 students over here wrongly make an assumption and in all likelihood you had you would have also done that you would have said okay let the dividend paid to equity shares be x then preference share is 0.2 x that is wrong it is not that you get 20% of equity's dividend if equity gets 80 you get 20 i'll again repeat it is not that if equity gets 100 you get 20 that is when we say 20% of x here if equity share gets 80 you get 20 that is 20 when equity gets 80 is actually 0.25x i'll again repeat when we come to this stage but this is where students make a mistake in determining that x compute the allocation of earnings for the purpose of calculation of basic eps when entity has ordinary shares and participating equity instruments which are not convertible the steps over here are the same first you will try to find the undistributed profit first we have npat which is 1 lakh from this you will first subtract subtract the fixed preference dividend which is not participating there are 6000 preference shares and to each preference share you have to pay 5.5 tabhi to aap equity ko pay kar paoge so this is assuming all profits were distributed then first you will have to pay 5.5 so this is 33000 and hence you are going to be left with 67000 however this is not undistributed profit if the equity dividend is also paid this will go to the equity shareholder undoubtedly so this is 10000 into 2.1 which is 21000 and hence so this is 67 minus 21 and you are going to get 46000 so this is going to be your undistributed profit this is your first step the undistributed profit second you will say let the money received by equity shares be x per share acha therefore the amount received by preference shares would be well if equity is receiving 80 then preference will receive 20 So if equity receives x, then preference will receive how much? So if you do a cross multiplication, that will be x into twenty by eighty, and hence this is point two five x and not point two x. This is where a lot of students will make a silly mistake. Aja, this is your second point. Now when we go to our third point, you will equate. We will say that well, if forty six thousand is fully distributed, to whom will it go? Well, it will go to Ten thousand shareholders, x rupees. It will also go to six thousand preference shareholders, point two five x rupees. Therefore, this is ten thousand x plus this is six thousand into point two five, which will be fifteen hundred x. Therefore, you will have forty six thousand upon eleven thousand five hundred. which will give you therefore x equals 4 therefore 0.25x equals 1 so now if you want to find your eps your eps should be your share in the distributed earnings as well as your share in the undistributed earnings okay for the equity share as well as for the preference share both of them are participating So if you are an equity shareholder in the distributed earnings per share, you will get two point one. But from the undistributed earnings, you will get four. But if you are a participating preference share in the distributed earnings, you will get five point five. But from the undistributed, you will get one if it is distributed. And hence, if all your earnings are distributed, your total will be six point one, and your total will be six point five. At the end, if you are not confident, you should always cross-check that. Let us say if all of the earnings were distributed, and if these numbers were correct, then to the ten thousand equity shareholders, you will distribute sixty-one thousand, and to the six thousand preference shareholders, you will distribute six point five. So six point five into six thousand will come to thirty-nine thousand, and that ways 
this number has to total to 1 lakh which is your profit your profit has to be 1 lakh perfect so this takes care of basic eps do refer it is a right share in this participating preference share working properly we will take a stop here and from the next video we will start with diluted eps which is also an important section